hi vlogtober day 16 and it is a good day it is friday um early dismissal for my kids from school and they had a character parade this morning they got to wear their costumes so i just came back from that so i had to look motherly i couldn't overdo it on the the makeup this morning <laughs> so <clears throat> i had to like look motherly anyway <laughs> y'all know how that is uh so i wanted to talk about um like someone left in the comments the other day uh that i'm obsessed with death or why what's my obsession with death or whatever like that something like that and i wouldn't say i'm obsessed with death i think when i was a younger probably because I was so ignorant to it and I didn't know anything about it so I was very curious about death and which is why I became a mortician um, since I was a child like since I was four years old I was very curious about death because I had went to my first funeral at the age of four and I was very intrigued like everything about the funeral the casket the funeral home was just like intriguing to me okay i don't know why it just was um actually i do know why but so ever since the age of four i was very into death and then i went to another funeral at the age of i want to say five actually and then uh, so on and so forth up and through the years until my teenage years um the last funeral I attended was my cousin's funeral and that was like two years ago uh, maybe three she died very young uh, of like a aneurysm brain aneurysm and it was sudden she was like 26 or 27 so it was very sudden um, she was my baby cousin like I used to play with her when she was a baby I was there when she was born so that it, it was kind of sad to see someone so young pass away but she didn't have any kids or anything so but she was an only child and her mom was left, you know, alone. So it's kind of sad. Okay, so moving on. I'm not really obsessed with death. Um, I think after I became a mortician, a lot of my questions were answered. But then they became more spiritual. So then I started exploring the spiritual side of death. Um, communicating, um, studying about, you know, different cultures and how they view, you know, afterlife and stuff like that. Because, let's just face it, death is the unknown. It, unknown to us, um, consciously, anyway. So, I was always attracted to the unknown. Like, anything that was of the unknown, I was attracted to. So, death probably was included in that. Um, and after I've, you know, learned a lot, experienced a lot, seen a lot, touched a lot, I was satisfied. And um, I, I was like, okay, well... I don't really have to do this anymore because all my questions are answered. I've done, you know, I've done the work, I've seen, I've experienced, I've touched, and you know, now it's time to live. Um, and it, also working so close with death makes you really appreciate life and the people around you. And you know, not just from saying, oh, I'm supposed to appreciate you, but really feeling it. Um, when you see a child, um, like when I was in the mausoleum the other day, there was a little five-year-old, a kid that had passed away. And that just makes you appreciate your kids more, makes you love them more, make you try to understand them more, listen to them more, because you never know, you know, you could lose them in an instant. So it kind of helps you to really appreciate and value the life that you do have, because it can be like when I was looking at those pictures yesterday in the, in the mausoleum, those a lot of those pictures were very recent so a lot of those people had just passed away you know one day they're in the bar partying or at a picnic or uh, you know in the back of a car and then the next day they're gone you know so you gotta um, you gotta value what you have and that's what death teaches you and that's what the unknown teaches you um, to value what you do know and you know take it like that because we are here to experience something and if we're you know always complaining always scared of everything always looking at the negative side of things we're not truly appreciating the time that we do have here in this physical body you know i know our spirit is eternal but we don't we don't we're too busy saying what's wrong 
and not seeing what's right, you know? Um, so I'm just like saying, appreciate life more. You know, if, if you, ha if you're upset, if you're mad, if you're depressed, if you're just in a rut, go walk around a funeral home, a hospital, a hospice, a cancer ward, go walk around over there. Um, Go talk to some of those people over there and see how bad your life really is because you know it's not it's not how bad your life is it's what you're looking at what you're focusing on so if you're focusing on something like that then of course your life is going to seem bad but you know it's really not i have so many people that come to me with all these problems and complaints and how to stop doing this and how to stop doing that and i just simply tell them to focus on something good you know, and forget about that. Help someone else. When you're helping other people, you're not focused on your own problems, you know. Um, and then they don't seem so bad. And you're like, what was I complaining about? Really? Was I really complaining about that? Like, see, I feel so embarrassed, you know. Uh, <laughs> I used, okay, let me tell you all. So I used to, like, I used to live in the, one of the nicest neighborhoods in uh, the Houston area. And... I had everything I wanted, but I would complain about things. I was, I was sort of negative and it, it's because that's how I was raised. My mom was kind of negative, but I, I hadn't totally gotten out of it yet. And I would just complain about everything. And my husband, he's very, very, uh, optimistic. So he actually helped me become more optimistic and more positive. And I think that's why we met because we balance each other out. I keep him realistic and I put a few things in his head that he should think about and he keeps me positive. So I think that's why, you know, we probably work good together. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, focus on the positive. I'm telling y'all what he told me, you know, see what see what you have in your life. You know, some people don't have running water. Some people don't have this, some people don't have that. Some people are going to die tomorrow and don't even know. And they're sitting here complaining and wasting life and sitting in front of the TV eating a bag of chips. And so go out and live. You know, I know a lot of people just do what you enjoy. If you enjoy, you know, sitting online on Facebook watching videos, then do what you enjoy. You know, I'm not going to be one of those people that say, go out and do this, this and that. And if you don't enjoy it, it's it's pointless but do something you enjoy do something that you would say okay well if I die doing this I'll be happy you know <laughs> and also get y'all stuff in order because like when people die they leave some crap and stuff that you would never imagine so if you have something you've written down and you don't ever want someone to read go trash it now and keep it in your brain if you have some type of paraphernalia or <laughs> something you don't want anybody to see you know <laughs> you need to like put someone else's name on it <laughs> okay y'all like I'm serious like um, you know I've, I've done that I've done that already there's nothing that they can find except if they get on my Facebook but um, actually there's not really much on my Facebook but there's nothing anyone can find that's going to make me look bad after I go okay nothing I mean maybe some of my um, videos might be a little bit offensive to some people but they know it's just videos <laughs> so clean up your life because you never know when it's your time and I'm not trying to be rude and get you down but seriously like when we leave our house every day in a car we might not come back you know some a big rig can hit us we can have a heart attack brain aneurysm I don't know it's something freaky and you know get shot by the police get shot by a gunman you know crazy stuff in the world today so I'm not trying to make y'all worried I'm just trying to say do what makes you happy because you don't know how long you have left do what makes you happy you know stop trying to please everyone else and please yourself because let me tell y'all something if you're out there trying to please people who are not important in your life let me tell you one month or less after you die they for they forgot about you already so try to please the people who are going to remember you forever and keep your memory alive, like your parents and your, your siblings and, you know, your significant other and your children. Try to please the people that really matter. And if you can't please them 100%, just make sure that they know that you love them. That's it. You know, because sometimes you can't please your parents or your siblings or 
your significant other. All you can do is let them know how much you love them. Okay, but don't don't live to please you know your neighbor or your friend. That's not really your friend. You know, don't live to please those type of people. Live to please the people that are going to keep your memory alive. Okay, and I'm just telling you all that. Okay, so let's see. Maybe I have time for a quick mortuary story. Okay. Um. Da -da -da -da. Hmm. Oh, the obese man. Okay, I'm gonna tell y'all about an obese. Obese man died in the hospital, and his bed was like maybe two or three of the regular hospital beds, and it was low on the floor because that's how they, you know, put them. And he he died, and I didn't know we didn't know he was obese when the funeral home called. I mean, when they called the funeral home. So I went up there by myself, thinking I could take the body by myself on the gurney. I get I get up there. The uh, security guard, he's a guy. He says, "Oh, you're gonna need some help." Um, ma'am, I'm like, why? Because I'm a woman, you know. I'm like, why? Because I'm a woman. It's like, no. You'll see. Like, uh, <laughs> so when I get up there, I saw, and he was like, like maybe like uh, six to seven hundred pounds. And the nurse hadn't even removed the knee, the uh, IVs and stuff from him, and she was like, can you do it? I'm like, ain't that your job? So she said, oh, I'll do it. So she came in and did it, and. I could not figure out how to get this body on the gurney. And so I had to call back up, y'all. I called my boss and he's like, oh, it's a big one, okay. That's a, you know, um, this is the one that, the, the crooked one. So he comes up there, he says, you can get that body on a gurney, I'll, I'll show you how. So he comes up there with um, this other guy and they lower the gurney all the way to the ground and then they roll him on, like they take the sheet and pull him like a little bit at a time until he's on it. And then they take the straps of the gurney with all his fat and they like squeeze and squeeze until he's like a sausage in, inside this gurney strapped up. So they took all his fat and they like basically squeezed it on top and buckled the thing. And then, uh, and I was like, and it took them like 10 minutes because it was hard. They had to like, it took three people. Okay. So yeah. So he was like, well, they should have told you when they called that he was obese and da, da 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 And I was like, yeah, they should have. So he was all sweating and stuff after working. <laughs> and and then when I was passing back by the security guard, he says, I told you he's going to need help. I was like, <laughs> well, then you should have came and helped me. And he was laughing at me. But, um, yeah, so you never know. Uh if you're in the funeral business, what type of pe person is going to be uh, there? And obese people, they get special caskets. Like, they make a big one. It's like a double casket. And if you need anything bigger than that, you know, they have to specially make it. But this guy, I think they didn't want the embarrassment, so they got him cremated instead because, you know, he was pretty big. So when you're really that obese most people tend to uh, do cremation because of the embarrassment of the giant coffin and, and the people got to carry the coffin and you know it's just a big big embarrassment so most people opt for cremation who are super you know obese or their family does anyway um so i just wanted to share that with y'all in case y'all were curious about what happened and oh if you're like super tall you got to order a, a special casket too or they bend your knees inside the casket and put like something under your knee so if you ever see like a really tall person and the casket looks like it's too short for them their knees are probably bent under the little uh part that's closed <laughs> just in case y'all didn't know and um also like sometimes if like a mother and child die together and they want to be buried as one, they'll put like, if it's a baby, they'll put the baby in the casket with her sometimes, sometimes, depends. Okay, well I hope y'all enjoyed my little speech on appreciating life and my little short mortuary story. And I'll see y'all later.